Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to go over the Tesla Powerwall 3 in 2025. Some of you may have seen my video back uh, from last year that went over the system when it first came out. At that time, Tesla had not released a lot of new features and a lot of parts that were needed to make this system functional in many cases were not available. That has all changed in 2025. There are no more supply chain issues. The Tesla remote meter has now been officially released and is easily accessible. Um, and this adds a lot of new value to the system. They are also mass producing the DC expansion units, which essentially are adding more energy storage to the same um, integrated inverter and battery, the Tesla Powerwall 3. And what that does is it gives you um, a, a less expensive cost to add more storage to your system if you don't necessarily need more uh, power. So the Tesla Powerwall 3 is Tesla's latest generation of home battery system. It was officially released back in 2023 with major volumes rolling out through 2024 and 2025. It's really taken the industry by storm. It is probably one of the most popular solar and energy storage systems on the market today for many reasons, mainly due to price competitiveness compared to a lot of the other mainstream solar and energy storage systems on the market. And that's because Tesla has basically redesigned the system for less components, easier installation, uh, less labor, and just make this uh, uh, more of a, like a plug and play type of system. Um, so what the Tesla Powerwall 3 has done, traditionally you would have a separate solar inverter and a separate battery uh, in terms of like the Tesla Powerwall 2. Tesla Powerwall 3 has integrated both the solar inverter and the battery all into one unit. Uh, and that way it's just one big piece of equipment that you go out and bolt to the wall. And that provides everything you need right there. So you're not really spending time wiring up a bunch of different components together and uh, it really saves a lot of space on the wall and just makes the installation simple and cost effective. Um, so the Tesla Powerwall 3 is a string inverter and this is much different than uh, what we've seen in the industry really over the last 10 years, primarily dealing with solar edge and in-phase systems. Um, with the Tesla Powerwall 3, uh, we're not getting that module level monitoring that you get on solar edge and in-phase that have module level performance electronics under each panel. So again, you are not going to be able to see what each individual panel is making on the roof. Um, and also you have to kind of work within these string inverter rules, right? Um, most solar installers that have really only been in the industry for the last 10 years, uh, this is kind of a game changer for them. This is kind of going back to how solar and energy storage was in a way uh, 15 years ago when I first started. Um, so with string inverters, you have to follow very specific guidelines as far as how many modules you put in series on each string uh, so that they fall within very defined uh, voltage and amperage tolerances. Um, all modules on the same string or the same maximum PowerPoint tracker have to be installed on the same tilt and the same azimuth. Again, you cannot mix and match roof planes facing different directions without drastically reducing the production output of that string or that maximum PowerPoint tracker. So again, the Tesla Powerwall 3 has 13.5 kilowatt hours of stored energy capacity. It's got 11.5 kilowatts of power output capabilities. It's got an integrated solar inverter integrated into the Powerwall 3 and the battery so that you're not installing all of that separate equipment. The system has a 10 year warranty, which is pretty good in the industry these days. And then you've got that Tesla homeowner app where you can kind of monitor your system, see how much you're making, how much is going to the batteries, how much energy you're using in your home. And you can kind of program it in different uh, ways depending on your specific scenario and your utility. So you can set up maximize self-consumption where you're just kind of trying to take as much of your solar energy as possible, store it in your batteries during the day, and then at night when the sun's not shining, you're using your batteries rather than using that grid. You can also set up time of use for those uh, customers that have time of use demands. 
This is getting more and more prevalent throughout the US where your utilities are charging you an exorbitant amount of money for power during very specific times of the day or year. And if you set your Tesla Powerwall free system to offset time of use, it's basically gonna save those batteries for those really expensive periods and, and make sure to discharge your home loads at that time. In some locations, you can even discharge to the grid uh, and bank a lot of um, cost-effective credits. So with being such a large uh, system, it's got, uh, I think, up to 185 lock rotor amps of uh, peak output current, uh, and that's basically gonna start like a five-ton AC. So many homes in the US can have whole home backup with one single uh, Powerwall 3. Now, depending on your specific uh, area and your home, uh, that may or may not be enough usable energy storage to get you through the night or to get you through an extended outage. But the power in that battery itself is, is pretty good. It's going to really uh, provide uh, peak power necessary to back up most homes with whole home backup. So what's new in 2025 with the Tesla Powerwall 3 system? One, we've got the Tesla remote meter now. That means you can pair this system up with existing solar. And with that Tesla remote meter, it's gonna AC couple your existing solar with the Tesla Powerwall 3. So if you have existing solar and you wanna add maybe some new solar and some energy storage, you can do so. And with that Tesla remote meter, it's gonna monitor that other system and it's gonna take that extra PV output and it's gonna use that to charge the batteries as well. And that way it's gonna prevent you from sending that power back to the grid, especially in those locations where you may or may not be getting full one-to-one -one net metering credits for that uh, existing PV output. Next, partial home backup. When the system first came out, uh, they upgraded the Tesla Gateway to only provide whole home backup. Again, they sort of made this system bare bones so that they could drastically reduce the cost and uh, in, in doing so, they removed a bunch of the meters in that Tesla Gateway 2. We're now running on that Tesla Gateway 3, which only has one single energy meter in it, and it can only provide whole home backup. So with that Tesla remote meter, you can now do partial home backup if you uh, need to in your specific scenario. And what that'll do is it'll, it'll monitor all the power coming in and out of your home, regardless of if it's backup power or non-backup power. So while the grid is operational, uh, you can use those batteries to offset all of your loads in your home, both the backup loads and the non-backup loads in order to offset your entire utility bill correctly. Um, and then again, when the power goes out, um, it, you know, you'll only have backup power for any loads downstream of the Tesla Gateway 3. So they do have kind of a pretty lame form of generator integration, but uh, the Tesla remote meter can also be used to monitor a downstream generator, downstream of that Tesla Powerwall 3 system. Again, Tesla is not really having a full generator integration where you can actually use that generator to charge your batteries during a prolonged outage, maybe when the sun is not shining um, in the winter, everything's covered with snow, whatever the case may be. Uh, a lot of other systems out there, you can use a standby generator to charge that battery bank back up in an emergency. Tesla Powerwall 3, that's not something you can do. But what the remote meter can do is it can monitor that generator output downstream and kind of have a cascading system where the Tesla Powerwall 3 is the first line of defense in an outage. And then if for whatever reason you drain your battery bank down to zero in the middle of the night, um, or during an extended outage, that generator can be kind of the second line of defense and, and kick that uh, kick on and provide uh, backup power for you until your solar charges your batteries back up. Next is the DC expansion unit. So again, uh, back in 2024, these weren't really available yet. And so if a homeowner wanted more energy stores, they would have to add an additional Tesla Powerwall 3. So that would be an additional inverter and an additional battery all in one unit. Uh, these are a little more expensive, you know, probably around a thousand bucks extra uh, per unit. Um, now, the benefit of that is you're gaining more power and more usable energy. So the way I like to think of power is it's kind of like how big is the engine? How much power do you have behind that engine, right? That is based on the inverter. Next is 
How big is the fuel tank? That is your uh, that is your energy stored, right? And so again, we've got 13.5 kilowatt hours of energy stored in those batteries, and each inverter's got 11.5 kilowatts of punch behind that engine. Now, again, that 11.5 is pretty significant. That's roughly 48 amps uh, continuous. That's going to run many homes in the U.S. during an outage and whole home backup with no problems. But for those of you that might be in like Florida or Texas, you have multiple heating and air conditioning units, uh, a lot of large loads on your home, maybe a hot tub or pool pumps and things of that nature, you may want the whole, uh, you may need additional power, in which case you could buy multiple Powerwall 3s, so you're adding both more power and more energy. But for those customers that don't need more power, maybe you're in uh, kind of a more temperate zone, you only have one heating and air conditioning unit, no excessive energy draws in your home. You know, you can get by with a Tesla Powerwall 3 and then just add a DC expansion unit, which is, again, going to add more fuel to the tank. You're not increasing that size of that engine. Next is uh, reverse EV charging. So with, paired with the Tesla Universal Wall Connector and the Tesla Cybertruck, you can use your battery bank in the Tesla Cybertruck as an additional form of energy storage during an outage only. So again, if you've just maybe got one Tesla Powerwall 3 or whatever, a Tesla Powerwall 3 along with a DC expansion unit, you're in an extended utility outage and you drain your batteries down really low, uh, you can plug in that Tesla Cybertruck into the new Tesla Universal Wall Connector when paired with this system and use your battery in your Cybertruck as an additional form of home energy storage to get you through that prolonged outage. So if anyone out there is looking for a quote for a Tesla Powerwall 3 system installed on their home, go ahead down in that description below, click on a Rocky Brog Solar Intake form. Just take a few minutes to fill out a few questions about your specific scenario, and I'll get back to you within a few days with a zero-cost, pressure-free quote. At the time of this video, I can provide those quotes to any of the states outlined in blue. Um, and also at the time of this video, I have really competitive pricing compared to a lot of installers throughout the nation. Uh, I think today, you know, I did a proposal, roughly uh, 11 and a half kilowatt solar system on the roof, a Tesla Powerwall 3 and a DC expansion unit. Uh, and it, it was within, you know, around the fifty to $60,000 range, uh, everything included. Now, that is not taking into account the 30% federal tax credit, which is ending at the end of this year. Um, so that would then knock 30% off of that price, assuming you have a tax liability uh, that large, which in most cases people do. Again, if you are trying to get your system in, you're trying to get that 30% federal tax credit, it is just imperative that you go out there, you find an installer sometime within the next couple months, you get that contract signed, you get started on uh, engineering, permitting, and interconnection paperwork because that system has to get installed by the end of this year and has to be deemed operational. In my opinion, that just means the system has to be installed and flipped on for a few minutes, tested, so that you have documentation that it was, in fact, operational in 2025. Again, I'm not a tax advisor, but that is the way that I personally am reading the verbiage in the tax code. So, what do you all think? Are you impressed with the Tesla Powerwall 3? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Let me know down in the description below. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, press that notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Till next time, take care.